Hello, whether you like it or not, it is happening. The collaboration between Ford and Volkswagen has already begun. The next Volkswagen Transporter will actually be a mix of a Ford Transit Custom and a Volkswagen Transporter. So I thought it would be a good idea to find out what the current range of Ford Transit Customs is all about, what it's like to drive, what it's like to be in, and is there anything which, as a Volkswagen owner, it's anything which we need to be worried about. And we'll also find out what we know so far about this collaboration. So let's get in it, take it for a spin, and see what it can do. Okay, so first of all, let's get something straight. I am sometimes accused of being biased towards the transporter, but predominantly this has been a transporter channel. And if you do actually think about some of the things which I say, they are actually factual, whether you like it or not. The Volkswagen Transporter is far more desirable. Aftermarket parts, there are far more available and companies producing them and selling them than there are for any other brand. And then as far as the resale value is concerned, the residual values, they are greater for the Volkswagen Transporter. So what I do actually say is actually quite factual. But if you think I'm gonna be biased today, then think again, you might actually be surprised with what I've got to say. Because I've been driving this for a little bit of a while now, and I really like it. Now it's lovely to drive. This is a six speed manual gearbox, 170 horsepower. And to be honest with you, it feels quick and obviously be the wrong word because at the end of the day, it's, it's a van and not to 60 times are certainly not high on the priority list. But it feels really responsive. When you put your foot on the pedal, then it does, it does go. And I've got to admit, it feels better to drive than, than the transporter. Did I just say that? And seats, as far as the seats are concerned, these are really comfortable seats. Now, these have got the um, half leather and they are feeling really quite comfortable. They are supportive, but there is the first problem right there, which I will come on to in a moment. Now, as far as the rest of the interior is concerned, I'm gonna come on to a little bit more of that in a moment, but it's actually, and no, I'm not gonna get into car review bingo. It, it, it's a nice place to be. I'm not actually gonna say that. I just have, because it is. It, it does feel nice, and I have mentioned before about the T6.1 feeling more car-like than the T6. And this, again, is another step beyond that. It really does feel much more like you're in a car than you're in a van. And I've got to admit that I like that. It's, it's nice to drive. But let's park up and have a little bit more of a look at the interior of the van. So onto this interior then. And first of all, the infotainment screen. Now, this infotainment screen I know isn't liked by some because it is one of the away from the dash ones, but a lot of the modern vehicles are actually going this way. No matter which brand you look at, a lot of them are actually protruding from the dash. And as you might have seen on my van, I've got the Halo 11. And again, it produced from the dash and I do actually quite like it. So it's got the infotainment on there. So you can choose your radio stations. You can plug into USB to play music. It's got Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, albeit you do actually have to plug in for that. All your settings are on here. You've got your Ford Pass. You've got all your mobile apps. It's, it's, it's just a, a normal infotainment system. You've obviously got your physical buttons for your air conditioning, your heated seats, which I did actually put on before. And, it's rather a warm day today, so putting heated seats on is not advisable. Now it is still scratchy plastic. It isn't leather and Alcantara as you get on some high spec vehicles, but it's rather nice. There's plenty of storage on top of the dash with little trays and little pockets to be put in various different things which you're gonna need in there. And it's got pockets in the dash itself with a reasonable size glove box, including these down here on the dash where you can store your bottles of water even reasonable size ones like that which on days like today like i've said you are going to need but they aren't the only cup holders there's actually cup holders on the dash 
and personally i think they're in a better position they just kind of a hand height where you actually are when you're driving the vehicle because of obviously you've got your hands on the steering wheel and it's just there to reach over and also don't think it's as deep as the transporter and the transporter with a flat white some of the cups you can actually lose down in it and you effectively you've only got the lid to grab hold of but this is actually quite a good design i really quite like that i'm sounding like i really like this vehicle aren't i but don't worry Volkswagen fans, there are problems. Now these vans can obviously be spec differently, but this has got the two singular seats up front and then it's got three seater in the back. Now this is actually just a van, so beyond that, you've just got a lot of open luggage space. As far as the dash is concerned, it's, as you'd expect, extremely modern with modern dials and displays, which are all really useful. Not much point in really dwelling an awful lot on that because things like that are gonna change for the new model. But as far as this one's concerned, yeah, I like it. But as I say, there are a few gripes, but before I come onto those, let's take a look on the outside. Now this part is subjective. Everybody has a different opinion on looks, different wheel sizes, how they actually want the suspension set up. Some like it absolutely slammed, some like the swamper look. Everybody has a different opinion. But as far as looks are concerned, it's not the ugliest van in the world but I do actually prefer the look of the transporter. Now, coming around the front of this, it's obviously very Ford-like, like a lot of Fords look with this great big grille here. Now, I'm pretty sure that the Volkswagen version is not gonna look exactly the same as that. So how are these actually gonna look? It's gonna be interesting to see. The transporter seems to be a bit more boxy, whereas this seems to be more rounded and have more shapes to it. So it's gonna be interesting to see what they do to it. The same will go for the back of it. Now this one, as you can see, is the barn door. You can get the tailgate as you can with the transporter. And I personally do prefer the tailgate. These ugly hinges are just one of the reasons. But again, that's subjective. I know a lot of people prefer the barn door version of the transporter. So what do we know so far? Well, we know that they're gonna be built on the same chassis. And we also know that this is gonna be built in the plant which Ford have got in Turkey. The Ford Transit Custom has already been announced. We've seen the pictures of it and you can actually place an order. And I understand that later this year, I think they're saying about September, you should actually be able to get your hands on the Ford Transit Custom. But what about the Volkswagen? Well, we still don't actually know. Volkswagen haven't announced it. Now, we know that Volkswagen side of things can't actually be produced anyway at the moment because as I say, these are being produced in the plant in Turkey. So there's two lines being produced in Turkey. You've got the current Ford Transit and the new Ford Transit and the old Ford Transit line will disappear and then that's where the Volkswagen side of things will come into it. So they can't actually start anything there yet anyway. But with the Volkswagen T6.1 still being manufactured, we know build dates are still actually going to next year. So is the new Volkswagen Transporter due any day it doesn't appear that it is so we might have to spend a little bit longer looking at the ford transit custom but they are going to be the same vehicle so what are the differences going to be we're just going to have to wait and see but what do i not like about this current ford transit custom let's have a look back inside because that's where my gripes are now the first gripe i have is actually down here and it isn't unique to the ford transit custom because the vw t6.1 suffers the same and that's there's no footrest where you can rest your left foot or more specifically there's actually no space although as i have been driving more t6.1s recently i've just kind of got used to putting my, my legs kind of at 90 degree angles but every time i get back into my t6 it's just nice to be able to have that leg stretched out behind beside it on the footrest it's certainly not a deal breaker but it would be nice if they could actually bring it back and the next gripe is also about rests, and that's the armrest here, or lack of it. I mean, these are captain seats, so you've got your armrest on this side. And when I'm driving my van, I like to sit like that, one arm on one rest, and the other on the other, and it's, it's just not there. Where do I rest this arm? Well, the answer is here, isn't it? I can rest it there, but that means I'm, I'm driving like that. And that's not what I want to do. I've got a captain's seat, so I want to, I want to put the armrest here. So that's the next gripe which I've got, and that one really is frustrating. 
but it isn't the most frustrating of the lot. What is, is this. This here really, really frustrates me because when you're actually driving, it's right in your eye line. It's, you can see your mirror, which is fine. And actually that's another positive. I do like the, the way the mirrors are because you can actually see or in all the blind spots. But this here, it is so frustrating. I'm somebody who uses my mirrors a lot. I'm always looking around and making sure that I know what my surroundings are. I do class myself as hopefully being what I deem a safe driver. So I'm always checking. And this frustrates me. I know it's only a, a little thing, but go in one and have a look and see, see if you think the same. It does. It really frustrates me that. And I really hope that in the new one, that isn't going to be there. Although... I'd probably end up getting used to it. Let's face it, a lot of the older cars used to used to have a piece of thing there, but I'm just used to having a, a big glass window with no objects there, so I can actually see clearly. Maybe I'm just spoiled. So the Ford Transit Custom is a good van, albeit with a few gripes, but you can still say the same thing about the Transporter, can't you? The current ranges have both got the pros and they've both got the cons. Yes, the big pros are the Volkswagen, and the residual values, they hold on to those values so well. And obviously the big following, the desirability, is that gonna continue when effectively you're gonna have an identical van? It's not gonna be identical, but it's gonna be extremely similar. It's gonna be very interesting to see when they announce, is it gonna be my next van? Well, I'd probably say, yes, it probably will be in one iteration or another. Will it be Ford? Or will it be Volkswagen? That's going to be something we're going to have to see. But these are two big brands, Ford and Volkswagen. So surely them getting together and making a product between themselves, getting those big, great powers, sorting out the issues which they've got. Let's hope that they can sort out the problems which they've got on the current vans, improve them and bring out a van which is far superior than anything else on the market. One issue which Ford is going to have to rectify and that is the security the ford vehicles are really easy to steal and this is shown in the the theft charts so hopefully that is something which they will rectify but if you are struggling with security and you want to know how you can improve the security of your current van you can have a look at that video here thanks for watching take care and i hope to see you soon